Yo! Welcome to the show! This ain't no Barstool Sports, this ain't no Good Morning Football, this is Lit Sports Online, bitches! Get your pen and paper out, it's time to pick some spreads! Alright, well that's a hell of an intro, I'll get started with the recap as far as where we stand as far as our picks. So far in the season, we still have Gerald in first at 73, 72, and 4. I'm in a close second at 71, 74, and 4, so two games back. And Justin moved up a couple spots, one game back in second place, or one game back of second place at 70, 75, and 4. So still not good enough to be professional uh, as far as pickers or, let's say, bookies, but we're, we're making progress. We're getting there. <laughs> All right, so let's start with our slate of games. We have Thursday night, we have the Washington Redskins. Going to Dallas to face the Cowboys. Dallas is a minus two and a half at home. I'll throw you a boon this week and pick the Cowboys. <laughs> I mean, I, I think this will be close, and I uh, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it goes the other way, but I'm, I'll take the Cowboys this week. Now gonna, they're great. Now they're going to lose. I'm going to dare to be different and say to Redskins, yo, the Cowboys are trash. Keep it moving. Justin just became my new best friend this week. <laughs> Cowboys all the way. I think I think our audience and um, you guys know why I'm picking them. So, yeah, we'll go with the Cowboys. So then we have our Sunday 1 o'clock games. We have the Detroit Lions going to Baltimore to face the Ravens. The Ravens are minus three at home. Ravens just coming off of a win against Houston and Baltimore on Monday night. But This is, this is a little tough, but I, I, I'm going to go with the Lions. It's just uh, if the spread was wider, I'd pick the Ravens, but... Just a three-point spread. I just think the Lions have, are much more complete on the offensive side of the ball. I think it gives them an edge even going into M&T Bank. Talk to the hand. <laughs> when my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut. Because the Ravens are for sure going to get a victory. You're going to cover the spread. Yes, they have a lot of offensive issues, more than I can count. And more than our time slot of our show allows me to talk about. But I digress. Our defense is insane. Our defense is on fire. And what, this is a negative three spread? Yeah, they'll get that. No question. Let's go. Yeah, I have no I have no doubts as far as the Baltimore defense. I was actually at the game Monday night and saw the Ravens beat the Texans. And it just seems to be that when they do win, besides that game against uh, Green Bay, <laughs> they just can't seem to win by more than a touchdown at most. Um, but I just think because of the Ravens' offensive struggles – that not being able to move the ball is going to hurt them. Mm-hmm. If, if it happens to come down to you put the ball in Flagler's hands and make a play, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to roll with Detroit, plus just give Whoa. me the points on this one. Whoa. Okay, fair enough. All right. You guys are both shunned right now, so whatever. So next we have the Houston Texans going to Tennessee to play the Titans. The Texans are a plus seven on the road. <sighs> That's that's actually another one that's That's tough to pick. That's a long sigh. That's tough to pick. You know what? Give me the plus seven team on this. I'll take the Texans. I don't feel great about it because Tom Savage is the quarterback, but I'll take a plus seven here. Yeah, that sigh was longer than your last relationship. Um, Hello, darkness, my old friend. I'm going with the Titans for sure. Jesus Christ, the Texans suck. No, there's. I mean, yes. Okay, it was a very close game against the Ravens. Jesus. Yeah, mm. <laughs> but yeah, the Texans they did come to play against the Ravens. They did a lot better than I expected, but I don't see them pulling out a victory. I don't see them covering even covering the spread. So yeah, yeah. So I mean that that joke was hilarious. It might not have been as <laughs> long as Justin's relationship, but it sure as hell wasn't as long as for you to eat Thanksgiving Day dinner. So oh I'm gonna go with Houston. Just give me the plus seven here. I, I saw Houston play against Baltimore. I mean they only lost by seven. Um, Plus, Tennessee still has some questions um, on the offensive side. So, I'll roll here with Houston plus the points. Then it brings us to an NFC matchup. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to Lambeau. It's a pick'em game. No spread, straight up. Who you got, Justin? Packers, not even a hard pick, next. Feed Jamal Williams. Packers with the victory. And the only person that I know roots for like a third stringer every week. Says the but, guy that's relying, his team is relying on like a third string running back. Okay, cool. 
Cool story, bro. It's actually not the third stringer. I met Alfred Morris, yeah, and when yeah. he was on the Redskins, he rushed for 1,400 yards. Well, what's he doing but for that's you a, guys? That's a different story. Trash. That's a different story. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to roll with the Packers here. Easy pick. Next. And we have another pick em game. At the beginning of the season, it probably wouldn't have been a pick em game based off of these teams' expectations. But we have the Denver Broncos going to Miami to play the Dolphins. Mm. Pick em. Who you got? Pick em? Yeah, I'm going to take uh, my chance with the Broncos here. Better defense. Yeah, their offense has gone down the crapper. We all know it, but I don't know, man. Miami is just, they're making it really tough to pick them now, like at this point. And, uh. You got some deep thoughts going on over there. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I, I, I'm going to take Broncos. For week. <laughs> Miami, I was watching them this weekend. You know, they're a shit show in really nice, clean white jerseys. Simply put, they have, they have some of the cleanest jerseys I've ever seen, but even that's not enough to win this weekend. Or much at all this season. Yeah, I'm going with Denver. I mean, yes, they have a million and one problems. Really don't know who their quarterback is. Offense is nowhere near what it is. But Miami is just complete garbage in general. Denver, next. (laughs) So we have the New England Patriots going to Buffalo. Uh, New England just whooped up on Miami last week, as well as Buffalo shocked the world and upset, I believe, the Kansas City Chiefs. But we have New England minus eight and a half on the road. Uh, Man, you are thinking today. Besides. <laughs> I'll take New England on this one. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where could another shock happen? But it's a division rivalry game. But we all know what the Patriots can do. And is it really a tall order for them to beat the Bills by nine points? Probably not. So... <laughs> I'm going to leave the jokes alone. I'm going with the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah, Patriots. Uh, as you, I mean, they covered their spread last week against Miami, and that was a 14.5 point spread. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go with the Patriots. I, I, it doesn't really matter to me that Buffalo comes back uh, and beats the Chiefs. They are falling apart, and New England is on the opposite end of the spectrum. Chiefs started out rolling. They rolled over the Patriots, and now they're dwindling. I believe they lost the last three or four. Mm-hmm. And then you look at the Patriots. They started the season, I believe, two and two, and they haven't lost since. So I'm going to go with New England. Then we have a good matchup that I'm actually interested to see. We have the Minnesota Vikings going to Atlanta. Atlanta is a minus two and a half at home. I'm going to go with the Vikings this week. Hot team. Not a, not a big spread. I'm going to take Vikings. Yeah, same with Justin. I mean, they're they're looking really good. Um, of course, yeah, Atlanta's at home, so of course, I think that's why they got the spread that was given. But I think Miami should have a problem closing that one up. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna tell me you give one of the top three defenses in the league plus two and a half points. I'll just roll with them. I know the other side is Julio, but I I just like what Minnesota's doing. Mm-hmm. Case Cam has shown that he's can be a starting he's quarterback. Legit, yeah. It doesn't seem that now that Teddy Bridgewater's back is it's kind of intimidating him or pressuring him at all. He seems to be fine. And I like the way they're playing offense. So then that leads us into another NFC matchup. We have the San Francisco 49ers going on the road to Chicago, Soldier Field, to play the Bears. San Fran is a plus four and a half on the road. No, Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo was named their starter. That is correct. So they have a legit quarterback. <laughs> And that's enough for me to take a flyer on <laughs> plus four and a It half. doesn't take that much for the Niners, huh? I mean, why the heck not? I mean, it's, it is the Bears. They, I mean, granted, the Bears have shocked us a couple times this year, but no, I, I think that Jimmy Garoppolo being the quarterback is really going to add something new to this team that they've been lacking. And let's see what happens this week. I like the plus four and a half for the 49ers. Yeah, Jimmy came in the game uh, late. And scored a touchdown on one down. of his first drives. Sure I definitely think he outplays Mitch the Bitch and the Chicago Bears. No question. Mitch San Francisco. Tri- Mitch Trubitsky. But, yeah, <laughs> uh, I like Jimmy Garoppolo. I, I, I think they should have put him in yeah. earlier than what they did. I think so they'll probably try to get him earlier. <laughs> Maybe right. The salvage. Exactly. But I, I do like the Niners here in this situation. You're going to start a better quarterback. I mean, he sat behind Tom Brady, so he obviously learned something from him. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to take the Niners on the road here, no problem. Plus, you're giving them points. That makes even awesome. sense. Yeah. Then we have the stumbling, as I said, Kansas City Chiefs going to New York to face the Jets. Again, the Chiefs are favored, but they are minus four and a half on the road. Hmm. I'm going to go with the Jets, and I'm, I'm not going to say that the Jets are going to win, but with that spread of four and a half points, I think this is going to be close. I'm going to go with the Jets. Yeah, I can see this being a close game, but I think I'm going to go with the Chiefs. 
I mean, yeah, the Jets have shown flashes here and there, but they're still the Jets at the end of the day. And yes, Kansas City has fallen from the top of that mountain all the way down to the base. And they're definitely, I don't think they'll do well in the playoffs if they make it, honestly. I mean, I, I, I just don't see them doing well, but I for sure see them winning this weekend. So, I just, Alex Smith, as Gerald has said, looks like me. You're a great value, Alex Smith. I don't Smith. look like Alex Smith. You're Alex a great Smith. value, Alex Smith. <laughs> Alex Smith looks like me. But anyway, um, he can't play in cold weather. I'm going to go with the Jets. It ain't that cold. I'm gonna, I, was just, I was just in New York. It's cold, brother. Anyway, but they're like in the Meadowlands. It's like not even that far north. Okay, you pass it when you go when you go to New York. If he can't play in forty to fifty degree weather, he should not be a quarterback. I'm just saying, <laughs> when the weather breaks, his play changes. But I'm gonna roll with the Jets here at home, plus four and a half. All right. Then it leads us into an AFC South matchup. We have the Indianapolis Colts going to Jacksonville. Jacksonville is a minus eight and a half at home, as we all saw. Jacksonville lost to the Arizona Cardinals last week. So, Justin, how do you feel about this minus eight and a half at home against Indy? Yeah, it does make it a little tricky, the fact that it's more than seven points, but I'm still going to roll with the Jaguars. I, I just think that last week may have been an aberration, and I like the defense to revert to its form Let me here. Look that word up. Great and really just words. shut down the Colts. <laughs> so, I'm going to take my chances with the Jaguars with the minus eight and a half points. Ah, uh, you wonderful thesaurus. Um, I'm going to go with um, actually the Colts. It could be a close game, I think, honestly. I don't know. I think there's a lot of things at play here. And the fact that Jacksonville just came off a loss to the Cardinals, who I didn't expect the Cardinals to win at all. <laughs> so that kind of that kind of throws me through a loop. I mean, again, you're giving more than a touchdown on the spread. Could the Colts pull off a surprise? I'm going to go with it, and I'm going to bet on that one. Let's go with the Colts. I'm going to go bounce back game for the Jags just because I, I just feel like last week, not necessarily was a fluke, but I think they may have been looking ahead in the schedule um, just a hair. They, they were probably overlooking Arizona. They probably were at the time overlooking Indianapolis on the week, you know, late in the season. But I think now with that stumble, I think they're going to come back, get a win by three field goals. I'll take them, especially at home. Again, again, with the spread, they can win. By a touchdown, but I'm saying they're not going to win by more than a touchdown. Okay. Now, this game may get ugly. Oh, boy. The Cleveland Browns go to L.A. to face the Rams. Jesus. Now, Cleveland is a plus 13 on the road. I thought this would be like a plus 22 and a half. But, uh, Justin, how do you feel about this? Are you sure that it's the Rams and not the Chargers? I read that incorrectly. The Chargers. He digress. It could probably be a very boring game. Okay. So what's the spread <laughs> again on this one? Cleveland is on the road to face the Chargers. My mistake. Uh, Cleveland is a plus 13. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty <laughs> that's wide. That's pretty wide. Um, yeah, I'm going to still go with the Chargers here. Even with that wide of a spread. Um, and I'll be honest... I'm playing that defense in fantasy this week. <laughs> but still, I mean, is it that tall of an order for, you know, that Phillip Rivers-led offense to put up two, like, 14 points and then have the defense be able to shut it down? I think it's possible. There's always one pick mm -hmm. Justin makes a week where it's based off of whoever he's starting in fantasy. <laughs> it doesn't matter what team it is. There's always one. Go back and watch all the videos. You will see this to be true. Yeah. The, the Chargers, are, oh, you're not done, are you? I'm done. Cool. <laughs> Whatever. Moving on. The Chargers honestly have one of the best pass rushes in the That's NFL. True. And I don't know who's starting for the Browns right now. Is it Kaiser still? It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. The Browns, no. No, there's just no way. I think, honestly, they barely even get off a touchdown, honestly. Yeah, I'm going with the Chargers here. Yep, I'm going to... Like even though I did mess up at the beginning and said they were facing the Rams, even though it's a Chargers, this could still get ugly. The pass rush is going to get after that quarterback, whoever that may be. Um, like I said, it doesn't really matter. But if anything, Cleveland would choke away this go this game. And I honestly think, like I said, it may be it's almost destined for double digit. Mm -hmm. The only thing that gives me pause though with this is that if I'm not mistaken, the Browns actually won a game last year against the Chargers. 
I'm hoping we don't see a repeat. Wow, that's a little... That's a fun... <laughs> I'm hoping uh, we don't see a repeat of that. You really but... reached for that one. Right. Good for you. So then we have actually <laughs> one of my favorite games of the week. We have a 425 matchup. We have Carolina going to New Orleans. Mm. NFC South matchup. We have uh, Carolina plus four in the Superdome. I'll take my chances with the Saints at home on this one. It's a rivalry game. It could go the other way, but it's hard to pick against Drew Brees in the Superdome. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Saints as well. Um, Drew Brees is a beast, honestly. I mean, I don't know how old he is at this point, but I mean, he's still playing pretty he's hard. Ageless. And then, Camera, their running back, who is my oh, yeah. starting running back in fantasy football, he's been going off every single week. Passing touch, rec- receiving touchdowns, rushing touchdowns, you name it, the kid does it. Yeah, I think the New Orleans Saints really put a stomping on the Panthers this weekend. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like what the Saints are about, their run game. This team that used to rely mm-hmm. on Drew Brees throwing 45 passes a game for 400 yards now runs the ball. They have good defense. And like I said, I, I think based off of where he's taking this team, the fact that he's changed his role as far as what he does, play calling, I honestly think Drew Brees is in, in the conversation for MVP. He's up there. He's got to be at least top four or five right now. We'll see where he ends at the end of the season and where the Saints do. But, yeah, I see I see New Orleans winning by maybe a touchdown or ten points here. Then we have Justin's L.A. Rams going to Arizona to face the Cardinals. Now, in Arizona, Arizona is a plus six at home. Justin, how do you feel about this one? I'm going to pick the Rams. Uh, last, last time the Rams played the Cardinals, they actually were able to lock down Adrian Peterson. Maybe we see a repeat of that. I mean, if they can't get Peterson going, I don't know what they're going to do because, again, they don't have Carson Palmer anymore. I like my team's chances this week. Yeah, it's simple. Stop the run, win the game. Simple as that, and I think the Rams have enough uh, youth and strength to do it this week. Plus, again, golf is going off. Like, that was that was that was, uh, that, was uh, that was pretty clever. Uh, oh, thank you. I was reaching. All you did was remove a letter. Anyways, anyway, whatever. <sighs> Golf is playing. I mean, honestly, wasn't sure about him obviously last year, but I mean, he's really proven himself to be a legit quarterback and a legit threat in the West. And like I said, it could come down to them and the Eagles in the playoffs. I have no doubts about that. I could literally see them NFC Championship. Eagles, Rams, whoever wins goes to the Super Bowl and probably wins. Yeah, I mean, I know it's early. Um, well, it's about that time. We can throw it out there. Well, I mean, I know it's early, but I think when it's all said and done, when the season ends, that <laughs> Gurley may be the the NFL leading rusher at the end of the year. Um, I think it's very well possible, not only with his, with his rushing attempts, but him in the backfield as far as a pass-catching back. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I would take the Rams all day here on the road. I don't care. Now, this next game is – it was going to be interesting, I guess, in some way, shape, or form, but the decision that this team made, mm. now it's beginning to become unwatchable, and I think this is the easiest pick of the week. We have the Giants going on the road to Oakland to face the Raiders. Giants are a plus 8.5 on the road. Obviously, they named their starting quarterback Geno Smith. They benched Eli Manning. I believe he had like 230-some straight starts. Um, but, Justin, how do you feel about this one? So this is Giants plus 8.5 at Oakland? Yeah, starting Geno Smith. Give me Oakland on this one. Uh, it's just really Geno Smith. I mean, heck, maybe he can't do that much worse than Eli Manning, but still, it's not wide enough of a spread for me to take a flyer on the Giants. You'd have to make it like double-digit points for me to consider it. Yeah, I don't know. Again, Eli hasn't probably performed as well as historically shown, but this is, again, a guy that's beat the New England Patriots twice in the Super Bowl. Not to mention, it's not all his fault. Now, again, in Baltimore, when you really look at it, down to if you don't mind, because I want to give that comparison, I honestly believe it is Joe Flacco's fault. He's not playing as hard again. Again, Eli was going with what he had. He lost his leading receiver. His line is complete shit. He doesn't really have any help around him. So what do you expect? So, yeah, let's bench him for a guy that can't even prove himself as some random no-name-ass rookie. Yeah, fuck that. No, we're going with Oakland. This is a bad decision on New York's part. Yeah, they might not have won, but they could have at least gone out with some dignity. That's my thing. I, I think they should have just let him finish the season. The fact that you look to your roster and, sit and think that Geno Smith is the answer, 
it just baffles me. The only other thing that I can think of is that they're tanking. Mm-hmm. They're losing to get a higher draft pick. Now, I could understand it if you went with the rookie, um, Webb, I think his name is. But to go with Geno Smith, I mean, if you remember two years ago, he was in the Jets locker room, owed some <laughs> one of his players money, and he got punched in the mouth, and he broke his jaw. So yeah. I, I just... My thing that gets me is I don't realize how you can look and think that Geno Smith has a better opportunity to win you games than what Eli did besides tanking the season. So I'm going to roll with Oakland here um, at home, minus eight and a half. I say they win by two touchdowns. Then we have Philly for our Sunday night game. We have Philly going to Seattle to face the Seahawks. Seattle is a plus five and a half at home. Now, obviously, remember, Seattle has a bunch of defensive injuries. No Cam Chancellor, no Richard Sherman. And it's those defensive injuries that are why I'm not picking them here. Uh, I like the fact that, you know, the Eagles are going to come in here and get to play a beat-up defense. Because normally it's a really tall order going into Seattle Stadium and winning, but when they don't have, like, their complete team healthy, that changes things. So I'm going to go with the Eagles. Yeah, there is no question about this. The Eagles are going to fly high pass all day. I mean, they're just going to destroy whatever's left of that godforsaken secondary. All right, yes. Chris hates my puns. Whatever. I see his face. And the life. Eagles. And you see, with good reason, sadly, your team was in the same position last year, I think, honestly, towards the end. I'm sorry, buddy. Anyway, go ahead. It's okay. Finish your okay. Anyways, nonetheless, I think the Eagles are going to go into Seattle and destroy. Seahawks, next. Are you high? Are you high? Are you next. serious? No, no, no. Explain. Are you... Gonna go with the is this bias? Is this is Hell that? Hell yeah, it's bias. Okay. I just I just want you to <laughs> Hell say. Hell yeah! I want, want you to own it. Thesis yeah, I want us. you to <laughs> thesis. Goddamn! <laughs> We're talking about that's my thesis. Too. Oh my god! Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Who did Seattle? Who did Seattle play last week with that beat up defense? And they hung around. No. So okay. they didn't play the Eagles. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. I'm going to go with uh, Seattle here. Now, that brings us to our Monday night game. We have an AFC North matchup. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers going to Cle- or, I'm sorry, going to Cincinnati. Now, Cincinnati is a plus six and a half at home. Yeah, I was interested to hear what the spread would be on this one, but because it's less than seven points, I actually am going to take the Steelers. If it was wider, I would have went with the Bengals because, honestly – it's one of those things where the Steelers have played have a really good record, but they've played close games against a lot of teams this year. So, um, but if they can beat the, but I think they can beat the Bengals by seven points. I think that's doable. Man, I absolutely hate the Steelers. I mean, Green Bay, you had one job this week. That was to beat the Steelers, and you almost did it. You really did. But you let Ben be Ben, and he came back at the end, and he won. Like he always does, and probably like he's going to do this weekend, which is unfortunately why I have to pick the Steelers. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Steelers just based off of the low spread. Uh, I don't think six and a half is a lot to say go and beat the Bengals. If it was like nine, eight and a half maybe, I would contemplate think uh, picking the Bengals, but no, Pitt's got to win by a touchdown. Like I said, I, I think they did, he did look past Green Bay when they played him, um, and I think that, that kind of got in their head a little bit. So I think they'll definitely be back on track. I think the offense will try to try to get going early. So I'm going to go with Pitt, uh, Pitt on the road here. But that rounds up all of our picks for this week. So we'll, guys, we'll keep you guys updated as far as the standings mm-hmm. and where we go from there. Justin, I don't know if you have any final news. Nope, that's it. Just I guess I'd also throw out there, it seems I'm inching closer, and I like my chances of getting into second or maybe first this week, so let's see what happens. Hashtag oh. wishful thinking. Hashtag move to the back of the bus. You ain't coming past me, boy. Um, Don't forget to like and subscribe to our videos. Also, check out some other stuff we got going this week. Um, our buddy Pat joins us, and we're going to talk about the upcoming UFC fight. Also, Alex premieres a new show. Take care, and have a great day.